Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deeds & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Mark Stein. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Lawrence Fox, on GB News. Frank, fun, fearless, and sometimes serious, much as I love a Friday night punch-up, what I really want is a battle of ideas. I want to look at things differently. I want to hear different voices and engage with your unique experiences. Every Friday at 7 p.m. on GB News. Hello, I'm Esther McVeigh. And I'm Philip Davis. Whether you're watching or listening on TV, online or on radio, we handpick the latest stories, debates and expert opinions for your weekend. So whether that's politics, news or showbiz, we've got it covered. Join us every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock on GB News. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. for Gloria Meets. In exclusive interviews, I'll be finding out who our politicians really are and what they really think. It's something that you would never want anyone to suffer. I didn't know what channels there were. B, I didn't think I'd be believed. I must have weighed about seven stone and I'm five foot eight. My instincts was to sort of cover this up. I mean, clearly that was a mistake. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Hello there, it's Eamon Holmes here from Breakfast on GB News. We're not just on your television and your screens, you know. We're on DAB plus digital radio, so you can listen to your favourite shows on the move. If you've not yet listened to GB News Radio, it's very simple. We're on your radio player and tune in apps. On your smart speaker, phone or tablet, or online at gbnews.uk. Take us with you wherever you go. GB News Radio. You never have to miss a moment of the People's Channel. No spin, no bias, no censorship. I'm Dan Wooten. Tonight, as paramedics prepare to abandon patients tomorrow and nurses threaten more dangerous walkouts in January, Sunak has finally channeled the Iron Lady by staring down the Marxist unions, inflicting death and destruction on our country. I'll unleash on the hard left's politically charged winter of discontent that must fail in my digest. Next, then my superstar panel give their view. Tonight, I'm joined by Amanda Patel, Calvin Robinson and Rebecca Reed. Fleet Street legend Calvin McKenzie's scathing condemnation of ambulance workers has already infuriated the woke mob. He joins me live to explain why he's so furious with the NHS workers who he says are using your pain to up their pay. He's uncancelled at 10.45. It's been a tumultuous year in politics. We've lost two PMs to undemocratic coups, watched wet, seize control of the Conservative Party and witnessed a full-scale invasion of our southern border. So what's Jacob Rees-Mogg's verdict on a whirlwind 12 months in Westminster? The true blue Tory grandee speaks out live in the studio at 10.15. Plus, we're rolling out the red carpet ready for the What the Farage Awards 2022 as Nigel reveals his political hero, villain and embarrassment of the year. I can think of quite a few nominations, uh, but find out who takes home the gongs at 9.35. As the New York Times runs another scathing anti-Britain column calling for the monarchy to be dismantled in light of their Netflix reality show, have Harry and Meghan done serious damage to the UK's reputation internationally? Ernest Owens, Henry Bolton and Kinsey Schofield duke it out in the clash. Has the SNP lost the plot by calling for Jeremy Clarkson to be banned from ITV forever? Following outrage over his Meghan Markle column, political firebrand Anne Whittacombe weighs on in this cancel culture outrage bigwitty style at 9.50. As Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP are accused of trying to shut down debate on their controversial gender recognition bill. Instead of publicly debating this much needed proposal, the SNP government has attempted to shut down debate and silence colleagues all around this chamber. So is the bill that's been poured over in the Scottish Parliament as I speak a betrayal of biological women? Plus, should the royal family be sweating over the release of Prince Andrew, 
the musical. Royal Highness, how do you think that went? Well, I nailed it. I did everything right. <laughs> I'll bring you another sneak peek. Uh, from Channel 4's controversial festive offering, that's at 10.30. Well, of tomorrow's newspapers, hold of the press. A new greatest British and Union jackass on the way, too. This is Dan Wilson tonight. Let's go. The What the Farage Awards 2022. Oh, believe me, I cannot wait for this. Uh, but before all of that, uh, the Juice with Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you, and good evening to you. Our top story tonight, ambulance workers and paramedics are preparing to strike tomorrow after last-minute talks between the government and unions failed to address the issue of pay. The health secretary met union representatives earlier on today, but pay discussions were off the table. Instead, the government sought reassurances over strike cover and patient safety. At least five ambulance trusts have declared critical incidents as they face unprecedented pressure ahead of the walkout. Well, around 600 members of the Army, Navy and RAF have been drafted in to help during the walkouts. Members of the armed forces have been taking part in two days' training in preparation at Wellington Barracks in London, where they're being trained to drive ambulances. The workers said they were honoured to cover for ambulance workers despite having to sacrifice time off themselves. Well, thousands of nurses in England, Northern Ireland and Wales have walked out for the second time in under a week. The Royal College of Nursing has warned their action could go on as well for six months more unless an agreement can be reached. They're calling for a 5% above inflation pay rise, but the government says the demand is unaffordable. The Health Secretary Steve Barclay saying the government has prioritised the entire NHS instead. On pay, we have an independent process and we have accepted that in full. And, of course, that comes on top of the extra prioritisation of the NHS last year. But we also, alongside that, need to focus on patients. We need to focus on those pandemic waiting lists, uh, get those waiting lists down. That's why we've invested the extra £6.6 .6 billion over the next two years. So we prioritised the NHS and social care in the autumn statement at a time of difficulty for the economy because we recognise we need to get those things down. Well, the Prime Minister, in response, has been backing the findings of the independent pay review body as he faced questions over NHS strikes. Appearing before a committee of MPs, Rishi Sunak defended the government's refusal to increase its offer to nurses and paramedics, saying the best way to help the country was not to increase wages, but instead to bring down inflation. I've acknowledged that it is difficult. It's difficult for everybody because inflation is where it is. And the best way to help them and to help everyone else in the country is for us to get a grip and reduce inflation as quickly as possible. And we need to make sure that the decisions that we make can bring about that outcome. Because if we get it wrong and, and we're still dealing with high inflation in a year's time, that's not going to help anybody. I don't want to see that. I want to see things get back to normal. And that's why having an independent pay process is an important part of us making those decisions. Rishi Sunak. Lastly, a coroner has ruled the 11 victims of the Shoreham Air Show disaster in 2015 were unlawfully killed. The 11 men died after their aircraft crashed onto the A27 during an aerial display at the event in West Sussex. The coroner said the plane crash was a result of poor judgment made by one pilot when undertaking a manoeuvre. The court also said the other victims played no part in causing their own deaths. That's it. You're up to date on TV, online and DAB Plus Radio. You're with GB News tonight, where it's time for Dan Wooden tonight. As the Marxist unions responsible for dangerous strikes by nurses today and ambulance workers tomorrow inexcusably put British lives at risk, Rishi Sunak is staring down the hard-left fanatics. Like Thatcher and the miners in the mid-80s, the former Chancellor is insistent 
that above inflation, public sector pay hikes, like the 19% being demanded by the RCN, would lead to an inflationary death cycle. Asked by the Daily Mail in a rare interview if the UK is equipped to deal with months of coordinated strike action, Sunak channelled his inner lion lady to respond unequivocally. So this is what he said. He said, yes, look, I'm going to make the same arguments I've been making. And today he continued to talk tough during his first appearance in front of MPs at the Liaison Committee. It's difficult for everybody because inflation is where it is. And the best way to help them and to help everyone else in the country is for us to get a grip and reduce inflation as quickly as possible. And we need to make sure that the decisions that we make can bring about that outcome. Because if we get it wrong and, and we're still dealing with high inflation in a year's time, that's not going to help anybody. And that's why having an independent pay process is an important part of us making those decisions and getting them correct. And that's why we've accepted those recommendations in full. Sunak hints pay increases are possible for the next financial year, but not now. Not now as inflation peaks. It's a tough message, but the responsible one for our economy. That said, how the hell did we get here in the first place, given the last Conservative election manifesto pledged to get tough on militant unions, insisting on minimum service levels across essential areas? Instead, as heart attack victims might shamefully have to make their own way to A&E tomorrow, an NHS ambulance chief anonymously told the Times newspaper, the best we can hope for is that everyone stays indoors, no one falls over, no one gets ill, and no one has a car crash. I cannot for the life of me understand why the police are banned from striking, but NHS staff are not. And it's unfathomable that in 2022 Britain, a government health minister is asking us to avoid dangerous activities, as Will Quince did this morning will be disruption to service and it, it is important that we you know where people are planning any risky activity I would strongly encourage them uh, not to uh, not to, to do so because there will be disruption on the day risky activity uh, like what leaving the house going Christmas shopping driving to work I mean the RMT rail strikes have already seen many of our biggest cities resemble ghost towns so shame on the unions who are encouraging the third Christmas lockdown by stealth following two years of hysterical COVID lockdown misery that put us in this perilous financial situation in the first place. But let's remember for a moment that Labour and the unions were never calling for the economy to be opened up, allowing us all to get back to work and the economy to avoid terminal decline. Nope, they were the Bain mob branding folk like me who oppose lockdowns granny killers and calling for harder and longer restrictions to be implemented. This is where we've ended up as a result. It's where the hard left unions who back Labour to the tune of millions and millions of pounds a year always wanted us. They believe that chaos and carnage caused by a new winter of discontent and yes, deaths, thanks to this general strike by stealth, We'll see the Tories forced from office. But I hope and believe that Brits are more sensible and don't want a Labour government in power by 2023 that is controlled by union barons. But to respond now, my superstar panel, top Daily Mail columnist and broadcaster Amanda Platel, the Conservative commentator and GB News host, the Reverend Calvin Robinson, and the author and journalist Rebecca Reid. Now, Amanda, look, you know I've been critical of Rishi Sunak, but I feel like he is taking absolutely the right position on these strikes. He's channeling his inner Iron Lady. And actually, if he can stare the union, the, the far left unions down, he might gain my respect. I think what he's channeling, Dan, is um, his inner chancellor. Um, he knows that the economy is... Screwed. Can we say stuffed on TV? Stuffed, you can it's say stuffed. That. The economy is stuffed. We can't afford these um, these inflation, um, uh, these kind of pay rises. It's just not possible. Above and inflation, uh, above I mean, it, way above, way system. above inflation. And and in all of this, look, we always expect the rail unions to completely destroy Christmas. That's what they always do. They orchestrate it all. But what I find most disappointing is that the nurses, who we love, we clap, we think that they're wonderful, we think they're saints. But suddenly we're starting to get this slight feeling that they're in this with all of those horrible um, 
unions who actually want to destroy the country. You know this pay deal that they're negotiating at the moment was actually first put on the table about nine months ago. Mm. So they've had all this time to decide to strike. They've had all these yeah, opportunities and people. they've they've coordinated it with the mm. most vicious left-wing um, militant unions who are funding the Labour Party to totally bring down the government. And that makes me feel... Um, that makes me feel less like clapping for them yeah. because they seem to have become so militant um, and they get rubbish pay. They should get better mm. pay, you know, but this is what they're doing now. So they're, I'm afraid that they're, they're losing my respect. Mm. Calvin, tomorrow is actually probably the most disturbing day of these strikes so far. If you suffer a stroke tomorrow, if you suffer a heart attack tomorrow, if you call up 999 and you say, oh, I think I'm OK, you're going to be told, OK, madam, OK, sir, get to the hospital yourself. I mean, that yeah. is what we're dealing with in 2022 Britain. It's a postcode lottery tomorrow as to whether you survive or not, whether an ambulance uh, will be sent to you. And that feels morally reprehensible to me. Yeah, a lot of the 999 areas already have backlogs. When you call them, there's already a list of 50 people ahead of you before they even get to you. That's how true And there was before the strikes. That's what I mean, yeah. already, yeah. before yes, so the imagine strikes. what it's going to be like tomorrow. And now we have people driving ambulances that aren't trained to do the, the blue flashy alert light, so they can't go through traffic in the same way that ambulance drivers usually would. So there are going to be people struggling and suffering, if not dying, because of this strike. It's dangerous, it's abhorrent, it's wrong. I think Rishi Sunak should buckle down, uh, show some true strength and not um, not crumble to the demands of the unions. I he think he should finish. Help. He shouldn't. He because should finish he the job that Thatcher it's started. Over and and not only is it over for him in terms of his respect within the Conservative Party. Yeah. It's over for him in terms of controlling inflation because if he buckles to one, all of the unions know that of this course. sort of strike action and they're works. colluding. But that's the problem, right? That there are different levels to which we need a service, and actually we can just about get by without trains. It's very annoying. It's very difficult. People's social lives are impacted. I don't think. But they're not the same thing, but uh, what, do you, no, what, do you, what do you need though. more, a nurse or a train driver? Well, you need course, a nurse more, unquestionably. But I don't want to undermine the damage that the RMT strikes are doing, to be honest. No, but it's not... They're they not... are destroying businesses, they are destroying families getting together for Christmas. That's not what people dying, though. They found out that he wasn't going to be able to get his train on Christmas Eve... And don't get me wrong, family. don't get me wrong, I think there's... That's heartbreaking. No, do it's not get me wrong, I completely, I completely understand that, but what I'm saying is... I don't understand why we can't have a grown-up conversation where we say, like... Because they're not grown-ups. Because no, your mates... No-one's having a conversation are yet. not grown-up. These far-left Marxist union barons are not grown-ups. No, the conversation has to be... Are they actually we have only We have only got this much money, therefore not everybody can have a pay yes, rise. RCN, Who do we need okay, most? So the, RCN, the nurses. Your give them a pay rise. RCN, because I know you love the nurses and the nurses' union, and you say that they're acting reasonably. I put it to you that demanding a 19% pay increase in the middle of an inflation death spiral, as I describe it, is anything but when did they But when did they last have a pay rise? And also When was the last pay rise? They've, they've, they've had, they've had every incremental year. pay rise. And actually, in, in line with the public with sector pay freeze, the only profession within it that received a 3% pay rise was the, was was the, the nurses. nurses. And what are they doing now? They're threatening six months more strikes. Yeah. And it just doesn't... It just feels really uncomfortable just, to me, Dan. Yeah. It just feels like... Do we you all, not feel but uncomfortable, it's Rebecca? With the fact that nurses are striking. Well, and, and the ambulance workers. The, the thing I find frustrating is there is a perception of healthcare workers as saints or angels or heroes, and we use this language to obscure the fact that it is a job. It is a career, it is a job. People do not become nurses because they are saints, because they're Florence Should the girls. police be able to strike? Well, the police don't do anything anyway, so I don't think I'd notice. Uh, uh, oh, uh, sorry, don't Rebecca. say that, don't say that. What? And should the, the army also come Well, what happened last time you reported the burglary? Okay. Um, think... Dan, have they ever done anything about any of the times you've been mugged? No, 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 they haven't. But they do nothing. Not They're point. useless. If you say that you are prepared to have a society where the police or the army can go on strike, I think they then should you know be able what to. you want. You want anarchy. They, I mean, I don't want an army. I don't want an army anyway. They can't possibly. I don't think we need a police and an army anyway. I they have one or the other. Uh, Rebecca, uh, they're, they're, they're completely they different disciplines. Um, come on. I don't they, think they are. Uh, I really don't. I mean, Amanda's not been here for my defund the police spiel before, but I fundamentally <laughs> don't think that we need a police service in the way that. that. That's very Cue easy for, for you to say no, from your uh, middle class pedestal. I, I live on a council estate. I'm not living in a middle class bubble. I'm sorry, with, 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 with 
with the nurses and with the ambulance workers, I believe they deserve a pay rise. I believe it okay, has to be done. OK, so you do think done. they should have one? Yeah, but they're getting one. They've been offered one. But not enough. But not cent one, pounds which is not uh, affordable. But and it's what not we should a be living... doing is we should no. be cutting out the slashes of overspending the NHS. Yeah, that's, I agree with that. Billions of pounds every year, mm. more billions go yeah. in. Half of every pound you earn, you earn, you earn. Yeah, but it's, it's, the in, but it's an inefficient it's system. It's the NHS well, is poorly run. Nobody will fight you on that. There needs to be a bigger conversation. But not right now. And why are the people who are joining into this conversation now? Why are those people who we respected so much? I know. And because we they want more money. Why wouldn't and, they? Although, although don't I do we have, all? I do have one other thought about um, Rishi. Um, I really work. admire. I mean, I was really fired up by the front page of the Daily Mail today. I said, I'm going to see them mm. down. And then I discovered that his favourite Christmas record is Michael Bublé. I know. Uh, love Bublé. Oh, I love Bublé. God. I know, but do you know <laughs> what really Calvin, no one made you into that. And Love Actually and The <laughs> Holiday. Well, do you know what really disappointed oh. me about, about that? I watched Love Actually. He Michael could Bublé. not name yeah. a you. Christmas song. He could not name no, he one had to Christmas get, he had, song. He had to and it's like, you asked me my favourite Christmas song. What's his favourite Christmas song? Happy Christmas War is over John Lennon and Yoko Ono immediately. That is a terrible choice. Disaster. Well, that's fine. But at least I have one. You can't say I'm so sorry, that's one. terrible. Mine's the Pogues. This, the, um, is when, this is what happens when Silent you have a heathen as a Prime Minister. But Carol of the Bells, John a Williams. A heathen? Did you just Rebecca call me a heathen? Reed. Sorry, can we go back to you calling Rishi Sunak <laughs> like a heathen? Why Rebecca is he a heathen? Your favourite Christmas carol. Uh, Same as a Pogues, Fairy Tales of New York. Is sorry. it really? Yeah, it's the, the best original. one. It's and brilliant. Are we allowed it's to brilliant. sing the naughty word, Dad? No, you're not. You're not. You're not. No? Well, you're not. do it. You do can it. Do it's it happened on the show before. Not, not on the show. It. I'm not doing it. But not right now. <laughs> Rebecca Reed, <laughs> because we've got to go to the break. Calvin Robinson, Amanda <laughs> Patel. Uh, they are here all evening. Very boisterous tonight. <laughs> Nigel gives his no-nonsense political rap of the year as he dishes out the 2022 What the Farage Awards. So we're going to roll out the red carpet for that very special ceremony. We promise no virtue signalling acceptance speeches. But first, has Harry and Meghan's Netflix reality show done serious damage to the UK's reputation internationally? Former UKIP leader Henry Bolton, US-based journalist and author Ernest Owens and stateside royal commentator Kinsey Schofield duke it out on The Clash next. Want to know what you think, though? Dan at GBNews.uk. Tweet me at GBNews. I'll poll running there. The results and a very fiery cat clash uh, coming straight after the break. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Mark Stein. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there. From 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. We are GB News, the people's channel. Why not take us home with you by visiting the GB News shop at gbnews.store. You'll find all the official merchandise, a really good present actually for yourself, your friends or your family. We ship across the UK mainland at no extra cost. GB News, the people's channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. Monday to Thursday on GB News, it's Bev Turner today from 10 a.m. We're going to be here for you, our GB News family, to keep you up to date, but also make you smile. The guy went from puberty to adultery. <laughs> and I can't wait to bring a few of my own opinions. I have no time for cultural totalitarianism. <laughs> we'll engage in passionate, but always polite debate with your thoughts and opinions at the centre of it all. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hi there, it's Stephen and Anne. At breakfast from 6am, you'll always be caught up with everything you need to know. The latest headlines, opinions and debates. We'll bring you the good news and the bad, but most of all, we're here for you. Remember, send in your views and let us know what you would like us to talk about. 
that's because we're your news channel. And every morning at 6am, it's breakfast on GB News. Join me every Sunday at 6pm for Gloria Meets. In exclusive interviews, I'll be finding out who our politicians really are and what they really think. It's something that you would never want anyone to suffer. I didn't know what channels there were. B, I didn't think I'd be believed. I must have weighed about seven stone and I'm five foot eight. My instincts was to sort of cover this up. I mean, clearly that was a mistake. Join me every Sunday at 6pm on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm, where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11pm. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us, 11pm, seven nights a week. Nigel Farage and Jacob Rees-Mogg coming up, but it's time now for The Clash. Not only has the Sussex's Netflix hit piece shattered Harry's relationship with his brother, betrayed the memory of his mother and trampled on the legacy of the late Queen, it may also be causing serious damage to the country. Scenting blood after the six-hour TV atrocity, the emboldened lefty media have ramped up their attacks on Britain, revelling in the chance to paint us as some sort of racist hellhole. In the latest scathing attack by the former newspaper of record turned highly partisan rag, the New York Times, Roxanne Gay writes, it's chilling to realise that racism is so powerful that the royal family would ruin what is, for now, the one opportunity they were given to reach the hearts and minds of the very people who make their lives possible. The monarchy doesn't need to be changed. It needs to be dismantled. But while Harry and Meghan may have given the woke media ample ammo, Lots of ammo in their British bashing agenda. Uh, Rishi Sunak isn't having it. Absolutely don't believe that Britain is a racist country, and I'd hope that as you know, our nation's first uh, British Asian Prime Minister, when I say that, it carries some weight. You know, I'm, I'm really proud of our country, its culture, its resilience, its beauty, uh, and actually it's an enormous privilege to champion Britain and indeed its institutions, like the monarchy, when I'm out and about on the world stage. What do you think? Have Harry and Meghan damaged the reputation of the UK internationally? Down at GBNews.UK, vote in our poll at GB News on Twitter, but weighing in on this now. Former UKIP leader and veteran Henry Bolton, the author and journalist Ernest Owens, he actually wrote the book The Case for Cancel Culture, so he probably wants to cancel all of the UK. And the showbiz reporter and royal expert stateside Kinsey Schofield. So Henry Bolton, this now feels like a real campaign doesn't it? A campaign led by Harry and Meghan and their cheerleaders in the woke US media to do down the UK as racist, to bring down our monarchy, when in fact, Henry, our monarchy is strong, it has the support of the British public, and by the way, the UK, one of the least racist, most tolerant countries in the world, and that is a fact. Uh, I th Dan, you're 100% correct there. Um, but, you know, what's motivating this? I think, you know, there, there are a couple of things. I think Harry's incredibly insecure. I think uh, Meghan, whilst the, particularly the American media and the left-wing media here would love to paint this as a racist, divisive identity politics issue, it is not. When we look at her behaviour, I mean, I don't know, I don't know the woman. Um, I have no particular wish to get to know her. I'd, I'd be pleasant to her if I did meet her. But I think her behaviour is narcissistic. And people yeah. judge her on that. And it's nothing to do with colour. It's nothing to do with institutional racism in the UK, of which I don't believe there is any. Either there are racists in every society in every, every, every culture, and I think it's abhorrent. But in this case, it's nothing to do with race. It's to do with her own behaviour. And, of course, you know, they, they now, having broken effectively with the royal family, 
have one commodity to offer, and that is themselves and the scandal that they create in a sort of rather sort of uh, reality TV sense. And of course, it's being lapped up by certain people in both, the, both on both sides of the Atlantic, and they're making money out of it. And I think you know to to scandalise the royal family falsely, and I think you know to to do so to make money are both abhorrent pieces of behaviour, and, and they're being judged on that. Mm. But, I, you know, Dan, something that was missed some time ago, and if I may just add this, my Please. first sort of red flag on this was actually Harry. Harry appeared some years ago uh, uh, outside or on, on Remembrance Day uh, on parade at the, at the Cenotaph wearing a beard. Yes, he had authority from the Queen to do that, but it is to me, having commanded troops as an army officer, both in the regular army and in the territorial army, you know, to wear a beard when you know full well that it's against Queen's regulations and that not one of your soldiers is allowed to wear a beard, I think mm. it just shows a certain, a certain disdain and disrespect for those people. And he's been showing increasing disrespect for British institutions ever since he's met Mar Meghan Markle. And I think there lies the problem. Ernest Owens, uh, you were cat clean away, cat clean away when I said that the UK was one of the most tolerant and least racist countries in the in the world. Uh, why? Well, I want for starters, you know, writing my book, The Case for Council Culture, I don't want to cancel all of Britain. I love coming on the Dan Wilson show, so I would never cancel the Dan Wilson Good show. Good move. What so about what, what about the monarchy, though? That... You seem to want to bring that down. I do think that the monarchy is bringing itself down. I think that what happened here was an opportunity where there has been many complaints of hate. I mean, colonialism is is something that the monarchy was supporting. You look at you know areas like Jamaica and others who are breaking away from the British. I mean, that's not just because of not race. You can't ignore race in those conversations. Ask any black Brit about racism in Great Britain, and I will tell you that you know they are very much so will say it exists. And also, as an American, I'm not saying America doesn't have racism. I mean, yeah. you all oh. did first come here. Yeah, well, and actually, that the only example of racism... So we Ernest, know, Ernest, we know Ernest, where, we know Ernest hold up one second. The only example of racism that Meghan Markle was able to point to in her entire six-hour whinge fest on Netflix was her mother being called the N-word. Guess where that happened, Ernest? Los Angeles. Los Angeles. She produced no evidence of any racism that she experienced while in the UK. Well, the problem is that you're only defining racism as the N word, which is inappropriate. There's other ways to be. No, racist I'm not. I'm saying just saying that was the only evidence so the, that she produced of British racism. Has, the British media has found other ways to racially categorize and discard her. There was a part in the documentary where he talked about one of the um, royal members wearing a bonnet. That it was a racially offensive um, pendant that she wore, um, and it caused controversy. We also know some of the issues with Baby Archie that was brought up during the Oprah special. We and don't have there proof. Is she hasn't like named some of that. names. These are unsubstantiated accusations, and, and the thing that I've got here is: Are you trying to victimise this couple who ha who are sitting on millions of dollars, who live in a mansion, who have got a lifestyle that, apart from the publicity which they courted and created for themselves, have got a lifestyle apart from that that <laughs> most people would give their, their eye teeth for, teeth for, and you're victimising <laughs> these two. If they kept quiet, they'd have a lovely life. Do you think that rich people do not experience racism? As a black person, no matter what level I was at, whether I was in Ivy League school or a no. public high school... Of course. I experienced uh, racism. But, but so I think it's just talking about whether, like whether Prince Harry right. and Meghan have experienced racism. And, of course, Ernest, I will remind you, the only evidence we actually have of a member of the royal family uh, being racist is Prince Harry himself wearing the Nazi uniform, to the dress-up party and referring to one of his mates in the army, Pakistani mate, as the P-word, which is highly offensive to that community. So that's the only evidence he, we have of racism in the royal family. Prince Harry. Look, I want to bring Kinsey Schofield in. Two weeks ago, when the aunties 
two weeks ago, one of the family members, and you all tried to say that she was too old, so she may have not known what she was Lady doing. Hussey, until you I don't think Lady Hussey was racist, racist for a single second, but that's a different debate. Uh, Kinsey Schofield, I want to bring you in. Why is the New York Times so desperate to bring down our monarchy, so desperate to paint <laughs> Britain as a racist hellhole? And Kinsey, does that reflect the wider opinion of the American public? Well, I mean, I do think it's worth noting that it's Hanukkah and the New York Times just printed a crossword puzzle in the shape of a swastika. So I don't know if they're really who we should look to wow. for lessons in tolerance. I've heard about that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I don't I don't th really think that anybody should look at them and say, yes, that's who we should aspire to be like. Um, but I, I I don't know. I think that Harry and Meghan are smart because they try to associate with the liberal elite because the rules don't apply to them. And you know, they're they court the exact, you know, the, exactly the right people because they they look to uplift themselves through those partnerships and through those collaborations. Ernest. I um, wholeheartedly disagree. I think that in what they have been dealt with and what they have faced from the family, I mean, one of the things that people want to talk about is the coverage, right? Side by side, everything Meghan Markle did compared to what Kate Milton was oh, doing. Please. But Don't bring this up again. Don't what? talk to me about <laughs> Avo bloody Cardos. <laughs> please, I'm so bored <laughs> of it. Avocado-making. To wearing the same dress, to the same oh. colors. The avocado Every article time was written by a man in New York City. This, it was this written is, this by is... a man in New York City. If you want to talk about the avocado article, go talk to the man in New York City that wrote it for the yes. Daily Mail. That is yeah. not an example of British racism. Look, when when well, Meghan when Meghan thought... and Harry when Meghan and Harry got married, the crowds turned out. They weren't yes. racist. No. The crowds we embrace them. In their tents we embrace them. Hundreds and, of thousands absolutely. of people. And look, Ernest, I just want to ask you a final question. Ernest, let me just ask you a final question. Do yeah. you accept that Harry and Meghan themselves should accept any blame whatsoever, any responsibility whatsoever for why things went wrong? Or are they blameless in all of this? I think that they should have left sooner, personally. <laughs> I think that, to be honest, as a black American, I knew it wasn't going to work out for her going there. And you all oh, did you watching right. the wedding with the entire country <laughs> right. stopping I, with the biggest I, street I, parties? I we've think had that's an appallingly insulting thing to say about Britain, the British people, and the British monarchy. I think it's appalling. I think you you don't understand how the mon constitutional monarchy works. It's probably the most stable form of go go constitution that there is. Uh, yeah. It's lasted longer well, look, than yours. Put it this way: it I would rather our it. political system than the American political system. But look, fascinating debate. Former UKIP leader and uh, veteran Henry Bolton, the journalist and author Ernest Jones, responsible for the book, The Case for Cancel Culture. But thank God he's one of the only people who doesn't want to cancel Dan Wooden tonight. <laughs> and the royal correspondent in the US, Kinsey Schofield. Thank you also. Who do you agree with? Have Harry and Meghan uh, started to damage the reputation of the UK internationally? Mary on Twitter says, I think they have damaged their own reputation, but not that of the UK, nor even that of the royal family. From civilian... Uh, uh, yes, they have. We have been portrayed as a racist, unwelcoming nation on international platforms such as Netflix. The power of such outlets should not be underestimated. And from Amit, how can they damage the UK's reputation? They don't represent the UK. They don't even represent the royal family anymore. Your verdict is now when this is a split decision. 60% of you think Harry and Meghan have damaged the UK. 40% of you say on the international stage they have not. Coming up, have the SNP lost the plot by calling for Jeremy Clarkson to be banned from TV forever following outrage over his Meghan Markle column political firebrand and Whittakam weighs in big witty style at 9.45. But next, we're rolling out the red carpet for the 2022 What the Farage Awards. But don't worry, uh, this particular ceremony will be a virtue signalling free affair as Nigel reveals his political hero, villain and embarrassment of the year. Farage joins me live to announce the winners straight after the break. We are GB News and we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for bringing us your conversations for helping our great nation find its voice. We are here for you on radio, television and online across England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. It's not the BBC, you know, you actually get your facts right. We are proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. 
Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. My name's Tom Harwood and join me 9.30am every weekday for The Briefing, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about what's going on in politics today. I wonder if this is a deal that might need to be like the biscuits in this factory, twice baked. Is there not an opportunity here to win out against the extremes? Tom Harwood, GB News. What are you going to do about it? Things should have been done differently and they, and they certainly are being done differently. Don't miss it. The Briefing with me, Tom Harwood, 9.30 Monday to Friday on GB News. Every morning from 6 o'clock, we'll wake you up with GB News Breakfast with all the stories you didn't know from the night before. So whether it's serious news, entertainment or your own views from all over our great nation, we're here to kick off your day with a smile. And the national media should be reflecting and reporting what's happening here. You will notice the Northwestern accents. <laughs> whether you're with us on TV, radio or online, every morning it's breakfast from 6am. Hope you can join us. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me in the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the People's Channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the People's News Channel. Join me, Nana Akwe, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's on it, she's on it. Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank, and of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4 p.m. on GB News, the People's Channel. We are GB News, the People's Channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Roll out the red carpet because it's time for the What the Farage Awards 2022. But don't worry, this isn't any regular woke ceremony. There will be no Hollywood lovies, no virtue signalling claptrap in acceptance speeches. Instead, it's just a straight talking political rap of the year with our very own Brexit hero and political revolutionary, Nigel Farage. Nigel, great to have you here. Uh, look, let's kick off with the first category. Who is your political hero of 2022? Oh, there's no question. Unrivaled, head and shoulders, above absolutely everybody else. Somebody with courage, conviction, passion, and she actually believes in what she's saying. She... Oh, the winner is Georgia Maloney, no question. Let's have a look. And so they attack national identity, they attack religious identity, they attack gender identity, they attack family identity. I can't define myself as Italian, Christian, woman, mother. No, I must be citizen X, gender X, parent one, parent two. I must be a number, because when I am only a number, when I no longer have an identity or roots, then I will be the perfect slave at the mercy of financial speculators. Nigel, do we, do we have a Georgia Maloney waiting in the wings anywhere in the UK? No, absolutely not. Um, the courage of her convictions, you can tell she actually believes in what she's saying. Um, and as a result of that, people voted for her and she's become the Italian 
Prime Minister. I think she's an absolute breath of fresh air. And what she's really saying through all of her speeches is that we're individuals, we're human beings. And as a result of big government, big politics, big banks, we're literally being crushed and destroyed as human beings. And her belief in her faith, in family, her country, boy, do you know what? She speaks in a way that Mrs. Thatcher did 40 yeah, years yeah. ago. I think she's absolutely astonishing. Um, and I, I'm i certain of one thing. She won't weaken. Uh, she won't give in. She won't be bullied. I think she's a very, very remarkable political leader. OK, Nigel, well, uh, not so good. Who wins your political villain of 2022? This is political, not personal. I want to make that very, very clear. But the man who had the world at his feet, an 80-seat majority, the opportunity to be the most radical Conservative Prime Minister that we've had since Thatcher, and he blew it. Um, he went green, he went liberal, he stopped telling the truth, and in the end, he stopped becoming Prime Minister. And we'll look back on this, I think, in years to come, as the biggest wasted opportunity of modern times. I'm sorry to say, Dan, you may not like this, but it's, <laughs> for me... It has to be Boris Johnson. Oh, let's look. I'm proud to have discharged the promises I made to my party when uh, you were kind enough to choose me. Winning the biggest majority since 1987, the biggest share of the vote since 1979. Delivering Brexit, delivering our manifesto commitments, including, by the way, including social care reforming social care, helping people up and down the country, ensuring that Britain is once again standing tall in the world. Nigel, aren't we looking at our next Prime Minister there? No, no chance. Bust, gone, <laughs> over, out. Uh, there'll be the, the, you know, the, the devotees, there'll be the Dan Wootens, um, there'll be people, you know, drinking toasts to the king across the water, <laughs> and all of that kind of thing, sort of. 1745 Jacobite style. No, it's over, it's done. And it, it, it sums up one thing for me, that there are two very different types of people in politics. There are those who want to do something and those who want to be something. And Boris always wanted to be something. He wanted to be prime minister. And once he got there, he kind of forgot uh, that just having the title simply isn't enough. And he took the Conservative Party so far to the left, it is almost unbelievable. The commitment to net zero, the lunacy on rewilding 30% of our farmland, and I could go on. And he said in that little speech there, he kept his promises. That red wall thought he would control immigration. I mean, last year, 1.1 million people settled in the country, and I haven't even talked about what's going on in the English Channel. It is, it, it is tragic. It is such a waste. This was the big chance. And you know what? I doubt we'll see a Conservative Party with that kind of majority for many, many, many years, if no, ever. I, th I think you're right on that. OK, let's move on. Most embarrassing political moment of 2022, Nigel. Well, it's a heck of a field here um, because, you know, we've had three prime ministers, we've had four chancellors, five education secretaries. By the way, only in 1827 did we have more prime ministers, oh, and a God. couple of those died. Um, <laughs> the Duke of Wellington came in to save the day. The runner-up spot is the appointment of Jeremy Hunt, oh, quasi yes. being sacked, and the complete opposite, Jeremy Hunt being put in place. That was embarrassing. But the winner of this category, um, head and shoulders actually, in the end above the others. The man who wanted to become our Prime Minister but finished up uh, eating all sorts of things in the jungle, the cringeworthy Matt Hancock. Uh, and this is one uh, that could be an unchallenged winner for many years to come. Let's have a look. Do you know what it is, actually? Mm. What I'm really looking for is a bit of forgiveness. That's what I'm really well looking done. for. Hey. Well done. That's great. Oh, my then God, I nearly cried just, then. Just say that. Well there done. So did I. Oh, Nigel, make it stop. Make it stop. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. No one gives a damn, frankly, you know, about the Italian lady. I mean, that's fine. That happens in life. Forgiveness, what, for locking us up 
taking away our liberties, uh, putting upon us uh, the worst social conditions, even worse than people live through in wartime in terms of their freedoms and their liberties. Well, I've got to tell you, maybe I'm hard hearted. There's no forgiveness from me. No, nor me, nor me, Nigel. OK, let's end positively. What is your best political moment of 2022? Well, like so many good things in life, it didn't last very long, but it was good while it was there. And it was Suella Braverman, who, who I'd always really secretly rather liked and thought there was a bit of courage there. And it was in the leadership election when she dared to speak the unspeakable, wash your mouth out with soap and water. It's when she said if she became leader, we'd go about leaving the ECHR. That was a lovely moment. Oh, yeah, let's remind ourselves. And I'm afraid the only solution to this problem, uh, and if we want to be honest with the British people, uh, on delivering on Brexit, on taking back control over our, our borders, is that we do now need to leave the European Convention of Human I've pledged that, and I challenge all my fellow candidates to make that similar pledge. See, Nigel, I still have the faith in Suella, but it's whether she can convince the globalist Rishi Sunak to do the right thing. Yeah, I mean, there she was speaking from the heart, saying what I've believed for, for, for many, many years, that actually, without doing that, you haven't got a proper Brexit. I cheered to the rafters. I said, had I been a Tory MP, she absolutely would have had my vote. But now, of course, with, uh, you know, Jeremy Hunt in place, uh, there as part of a globalist coup, and Rishi Sunak, our first ever Goldman Sachs Prime Minister, um, I think it looks very unlikely, and her career as Home Secretary will finish up the same as Priti Patel. Despite her best intentions to do the right thing, I don't think she's going to be allowed to. Nigel Farage, what a year it has been. Thank you so much for your contributions on this show. We absolutely love it uh, every week and have a very, very good Christmas. Happy Christmas. Thank you, Nigel. Now, coming up, as Nicola Sturgeon is accused of trying to shut down debate around the gender recognition bill, an MSP's vote against sex offenders being prevented from self-IDing. Is the legislation a betrayal of biological women? My superstar panel returned to debate that in the media buzz after 10. But first, has the SNP lost the plot by calling for Jeremy Clarkson to be banned from TV following outrage over his Meghan Markle column? Political firebrand Anne Whittacombe straight up after the break. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deeds & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Mark Stein. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there from 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Kerr. Me and my panel will get stuck right into the day's events. And I can tell you, in fact, I can warn you, expect some robust debates, some strong opinions and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubery, Monday to Friday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Kerr. We are GB News, the people's channel. Why not take us home with you by visiting the GB News shop at gbnews.store. You'll find all the official merchandise, a really good present actually for yourself, your friends or your family. We ship across the UK mainland at no extra cost. GB News, the people's channel. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. 
We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing. You see, amazing. You remind me of me in the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the people's channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the people's news channel. My name is Andrew Doyle. Join me every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. for Free Speech Nation. This is a show where we address current affairs and news stories of the week with the help of two wonderful comedian panelists. I brought in comics because I want to give it a lighter edge and also they work for less. See you there. And Whittakam is tonight's outsider. Now, it's caused much controversy, but one of the most OTT reactions to Jeremy Clarkson's Meghan Markle column over the weekend came from the hysterical SNP. The party's shadow culture secretary, John Nicholson, penned a hilarious letter to ITV demanding Clarkson be cancelled from his Who Wants to Be a Millionaire presenting gig and then permanently banned from television. Uh, now, can I remind Mr Nicholson that freedom of speech only works if you accept that sometimes people might say things that you find offensive? Nicholson's weak argument is also based off the fact that his thin-skinned leader, Nicola Sturgeon, was name-checked in the incendiary column, prompting her to wade in too. To be perfectly frank, uh, the emotion uh, I feel most strongly uh, for men like, like Jeremy Clarkson is, is pity that somebody can be so distorted by hate, in this case hate against Meghan Markle, that they write that kind of, you know, vile stuff in a newspaper. I mean, she's the fine one to talk about hate. The SNB's venomous campaign against the Tories has been running unchecked for years, not least when they ran this television advert in May showing a granny launching a Tory voting mannequin across a field. So, Anne Whittakin, what I find fascinating about this is the left always like to say, oh, cancel culture doesn't exist, but surely this proves it's alive and well and kicking, especially in Scotland. Indeed, and I mean, the silly thing about this is it was in very, very poor taste, that comment. But since when were you cancelled for poor taste? If you're going to cancel people for poor taste, you're going to cancel all the comedians. I mean, you know, it's absolutely ridiculous. The other thing that's ridiculous is that people are saying, oh, this is misogyny. Well, if he'd said that about a man, nobody would have said, oh, that is misandry. I mean, anything you say about a woman these days is misogyny even if it's a very intellectual criticism, which this certainly wasn't. But it still comes over uh, to some people as misogyny. Now, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Clarkson wrote this. I think it's bad taste. I would never have written it, but he wrote it. He's got the freedom to do that. His editor obviously passed it. The lawyers obviously passed it. Uh, so, you know, there we go. No, I, I actually agree on that, because the thing is, Anne, Clarkson is quite a comedic writer as well. There's something quite surreal in the way that he pens his columns. It's different to how you and me do it. He comes at it from a comic leaning. So personally, I, I would never have write, wrote, uh, written it either. But I do find it fascinating when you've got Joe Brand saying that Nigel Farage uh, should be attacked with battery acid, she doesn't get cancelled, yeah. everyone says it's comedy. Miriam Margulies saying she hopes Boris Johnson dies a slow, painful yeah. death. Oh, that's just comedy. Yeah. But all of a sudden, when it's a right-wing columnist and completely different reaction. Uh, indeed, and that does expose the sheer hypocrisy of the, the cancel culture. What they really mean is they just want to cancel those they don't like. Um, and as long as somebody's on the politically right side as far as they're concerned, which is, of course, the politically left side, then fine, you know, put up with absolutely anything. Of course Clarkson shouldn't be banned from anything as a result of this. And the idea that because you take issue with something he wrote in a newspaper, that therefore he should also be banned from television, uh, I think is a nonsense. Anyway, who else is going to do who wants to be a millionaire? Although this is ITV, Anne, they're very woke. They 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 cancelled uh, Piers Morgan, didn't they, for criticising Meghan? Well, and Piers is now doing very nicely, thank you. 
uh, and you know, I dare say Jeremy Clarkson can can rise above all of this. But but it is a nonsense the idea that you can't criticise Meghan Markle. I would I wouldn't want to do what Jeremy Clarkson wanted to do. As I say, I think it's very poor taste indeed. But I've often yearned just to put her down in a very poor part of Africa for a month, and then to say to her at the end of it, "How hard done by do you really think you are?" Yes. Yes, exactly. She ain't no victim, Anne, as they right. say. Uh, look, Anne, we've loved your contributions all year. This will be the last time we talk in 2022, so have a very Merry Christmas. Can't wait to speak again in 2023. What are your plans? Uh, I'm having a quiet Christmas, I'm very pleased to say, and the family are invading for New Year, so Love I shall it. gear up then. But before Love that... It. Nice, quiet, peaceful Christmas and a long walk on Dartmoor. Merry Christmas to all the viewers. Thank you, Anne. We'll speak next year. But coming up, Tory Grandy Jacob Rees-Mogg reflects on a turbulent year for the Conservatives that saw them lose two Prime Ministers amid countless crises. Don't miss his unflinching 2022 review at 10.15. But first, as the SNP are accused of trying to shut down debate and a move to prevent sex offenders self-identifying as voted down, is Scotland's Gender Recognition Bill a betrayal of biological women? My superstar panel joined me for that in the media buzz after the break. And you'll get a first look at tomorrow's newspapers then too. I'm Mark Dolan. Join me at 11 on GB News for Headliners, in which I'll be joined by two of the UK's top comedians discussing tomorrow's papers. If it's an important story, we'll cover it, but we'll have some fun along the way. Headliners, the late night paper review that won't send you to sleep like the others will. Seven nights a week at 11 p.m. on GB News. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubri, and you can join me every weekday, six till seven on Jubes and Kerr. Me and my panel will get stuck right into the day's events. And I can tell you, in fact, I can warn you, expect some robust debates some strong opinions and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubri, Monday to Friday, six till seven on Jubes and Kerr. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. We are GB News, the People's Channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. NPM, I'm Dan Wooten. Tonight, we're facing one of the most perilous 24 hours for Brits in recent history, as callous ambulance strikes mean thousands suffering medical emergencies such as heart attacks and strokes we left to fend for themselves. So given the huge risk of harm, is there any excuse to down tools? Fleet Street icon Calvin McKenzie has come under fire online for his condemnation of emergency workers. He's uncancelled at 10.45. He's arguably the bluest of the true blue Tories. And tonight, after a tumultuous year in politics, Jacob Rees-Mogg gives his typically unflinching verdict on everything from the migrant crisis to the wet, seizing control of his beloved par party. He's going to join me live in the studio at 10.15. As straight-talking Tory Minister Kemi Badenoch issues a challenge to Nicola Sturgeon, is the Gender Recognition Bill, which has been voted on by the Scottish Government as I speak, by the way, a betrayal of biological women? I'll debate that next with my superstar panel, Amanda Blattel, the Reverend Calvin Robinson and Rebecca Reid.
with Prince Harry agreeing to yet another bombshell interview with ITV ally and BFF Tom Bradby. Why are the Sussexes continuing to duck tough questions? And also coming up in the media buzz, uh, will Prince Andrew the musical be a royal knockout this Christmas? Royal Highness, how do you think that went? Well, I nailed it. I did everything right. Goodness me, I'll bring you more of the first footage from Channel 4's controversial festive offering at 10.30. We'll have tomorrow's newspaper front pages in just a moment too. And a new Greatest Britain and Uni and Jackass, so do stay up with us tonight. But before all of that, the news headlines at 10 with Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you and good evening to you. Ambulance workers and paramedics are preparing to strike tomorrow after last minute's talks between the government and unions failed to address the issue of pay. The health secretary met union representatives earlier on today, but pay discussions were off the table. Instead, the government sought reassurances over strike cover and patient safety. At least five ambulance trusts have declared critical incidents as they face unprecedented pressure ahead of the walkout. Meanwhile, around 600 members of the forces, that's the Army, Royal Navy and RAF, have been drafted in to help during the walkouts. Members of the armed forces have been taking part in two days specialist training at Wellington Barracks in London, where they're being trained to drive ambulances. The workers said they were honoured to cover for ambulance workers, despite having to sacrifice time off themselves. And thousands of nurses in England, Northern Ireland and Wales have walked out for the second time in under a week. The Royal College of Nursing has warned their action could go on for at least six months unless an agreement is reached. They're calling for a 5% above inflation pay rise, but the government says the demands are unaffordable. The Health Secretary Steve Barclay saying the government has prioritised the NHS. On pay, we have an independent process and we have accepted that in full and of course that comes on top of the extra prioritisation of the NHS last year. But we also, alongside that, need to focus on patients. We need to focus on those pandemic waiting lists, uh, get those waiting lists down. That's why we've invested the extra 6.6 .6 billion over the next two years. So we prioritised the NHS and social care in the autumn statement at a time of difficulty for the economy because we recognise we need to get those things down. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister has backed the findings of the independent pay review body as he faced questions about NHS strikes. Appearing before a committee of MPs, Rishi Sunak defended the government's refusal to increase its offer to nurses and paramedics, also saying the best way to help the country was not to increase wages, but to bring down inflation. I've acknowledged that it is difficult. It's difficult for everybody because inflation is where it is. And the best way to help them and to help everyone else in the country is for us to get a grip and reduce inflation as quickly as possible. And we need to make sure that the decisions that we make can bring about that outcome. Because if we get it wrong and, and we're still dealing with high inflation in a year's time, that's not going to help anybody. I don't want to see that. I want to see things get back to normal. And that's why having an independent pay process is an important part of us making those decisions. A coroner has ruled the 11 victims of the Shoreham Air crash in 2015 were unlawfully killed. The 11 men died after their aircraft crashed on the A27 during an aerial display at the event in West Sussex. The coroner said the plane crash was a result of poor judgment made by one pilot when undertaking a manoeuvre. The court also said the other victims played no part in causing their own deaths. That's it. You're up to date on TV, online and DAB Plus Radio. You're with GB News. Back now to Dan Wooden tonight. Tomorrow's news tonight now on our media buzz. Uh, the first front pages have just been delivered. A bleak warning on the Metro. You better watch out as ambulance workers get ready to strike for 24 hours tomorrow. Health Minister Will Quince tells people to avoid getting injured or ill.
The Eye also leading on strikes, reporting that Rishi Sunak is under pressure to end the NHS deadlock as ambulance staff walk out for the first time in 30 years. Sickening is the headline in the Daily Mirror as PPE scandal peer Michelle Moan is pictured on a luxury break at a £6,000 a night hotel in the Alps, whilst nurses and 999 crews strike for better wages. And of course, this hour we have both Jacob Rees Mogg and Calvin McKenzie coming up on this. But first, my superstar panel back with me, top Daily Mirror. Now, columnist and broadcaster Amanda Platel, the conservative commentator, the Reverend Calvin Robinson, and the author and journalist Rebecca Reed. Now, the state-sanctioned erasure of women in Nicola Sturgeon, Scotland, is currently edging closer as SMPs launch a mammoth debate on controversial Gender Recognition Act reforms. And in a move that sparked fury among women's rights activists and seemingly confirmed fears their entire gender has been put in jeopardy to pander to trans extremists, Holyrood tonight voted against an amendment that would have prevented, wait for this, registered sex offenders from being able to self-ID. The horrific move sparked cries of shame on you from the public gallery. I call Amendment 94 in the name of Claire Baker already to be... Those scenes resulted in the protesters being removed and, according to Russell Finlay, the Scottish Conservative who proposed the amendment, threatened with arrest. His brave colleague, Rachel Hamilton, had earlier spoken out against Sturgeon's attempt to silence opponents, accusing her operatives of writing late last night to three dissenting MSPs to demand they withdraw this crucial amendment and others. The amendments in question all aim to provide protections for women's rights. Yet instead of publicly debating this much needed proposal, the SNP government has attempted to shut down debate and silence colleagues all around this chamber. The bill is set to face a crucial crunch vote tomorrow following debate of around 150 amendments. Now, critics have argued there is not enough time to properly address them all. And Westminster's Women's and Equality Minister Kemi Badenoch has met with the Scottish Government to demand justification for the reforms. I mean, Calvin Robinson, the first thing I want to say, mm. this is a huge story uh, basically being ignored by the BBC, Sly News, ITV News. It doesn't fit their agenda, does it? Because this is actually when you see the reality mm. of the extremist woke agenda that they push every day come to fruition. Yeah, of course. But my question is, who's asking for these reforms? I don't see a great demand for changes in the legislation to say that actually you don't need any medical uh, supervision or help mm. or you don't need to a, a diagnosis or you don't need to live as a woman for a year or two years. Three months will suffice. This doesn't just seem to me to be anti-women and it is anti-women. It's going to be open to abuse. We're seeing more and more in the press these so-called women are physically and sexually abusing actual women. And let's be honest, the papers re report them as women when it's men. It's males that are sexually and physically abusing females. So you're talking about trans women? Yes, yes, trans women who are not women. <clears throat> but it's not only anti-women, it's anti-truth. It's fundamentally wrong and no one's standing up against it. But Rebecca, you, you think as a feminist that this is a good thing, which surprises me because this to me is seemingly everything that feminists like you fought against. No, I, I don't think I'd go so far as to say that it's a good thing. And I, and I for all, I like to take the provocateur position. The thing about you you can be a registered sex, and sex offender and then say that you're transitioning. I cannot get on board with that. I don't understand it. That's part what of I this would bill. Say, and, and I, and it's I think, a tiny part, but it's, though. It's, yeah, it's but really it's part of it. The, 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 the thing, what I would say is that there are so few trans people in this country, and yet it seems to be a conversation all the time everywhere and I don't understand how it's become such a dominant dominant narrative given that it, honestly most people in this country will never even meet a trans person and the majority of trans people are not loudmouth activists who want to get rid of the word woman or vagina they are private individuals who want to quietly get on with their lives. So Rebecca the, the reason it's become such an issue is because there is a there is a lobby group behind the trans community and there are trans women who are very very aggressive and that's why you can't say it hasn't just come out of nowhere. And, and uh, you know, it's Christmas Eve. Try and be, you know, cheerful. Almost Christmas Eve. Try and be cheerful. I would never in my lifetime accept a man who, after a couple of months or mm. however many years, I don't care if it's his whole lifetime, says he's a woman. I'm a woman. I'm born with, can I say the words? Mm -hmm. I'm born with a vagina. I'm born with a womb. I'm born with ovaries. I'm born with breasts. 
to feed children if you're lucky enough to have them. But it is very you know, difficult. But, 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 you know, it's not, you can't just, you go through years of, you know, mm. of, of having periods and then mm. you just, when you think you're out of that drama and you had your kids, then you hit, get whacked by the, the menopause. menopause. Do not try and walk in my shoes. No man in stiletto size 12 shoes can walk in my shoes as a woman. Right. And I will never accept it. I, suppose, it's woman I will face, never accept it. But you disagree it. with that, Rebecca? I think it's complicated because... How? It's not complicated, Because Rebecca. there are women who... Like, well, there are women who are born without wombs. There are women oh, like, who are uh, unable know, one to have... have one in, yeah, one they're, they're they're unusual. They are so unusual. So why is it a trend that's now unusual. judging and, and determining so, a social narrative that makes people like J.K. Rowling be completely demonised. So, okay, here's here's oh. what I would say is that J.K. Rowling has cared about women's rights for her whole life and her whole career. She has always campaigned for women. Therefore, I believe what she's doing is in good faith. For me personally, I think perhaps she's gone a bit far down that road, but it comes oh, from so good faith. Agree. But what I would say the is I think Kemi Badenoch, I don't think actually is that bothered about the other side of women's rights. I think it's about freedom of speech for her because that is her big thing that she cares about. And I slightly resent that I feel like she's using this to make a point and possibly further her own reputation. Oh, come on. Um, Rebecca, that's just such un that's so unfair. You don't know what's behind her. She may feel as yeah, passionately maybe. as I do. She's a woman. What it is to so be a woman. So am I. She's a woman. You know, but do you know what? My, well, I know, but my you seem to be okay. Not so fragile you seem to be okay with it's not gender fragile. being it's, erased. It's intrinsic. It's absolutely embedded in every mm. cell you know in our DNA. It's not that I'm OK with it. It's that I'm probably part of the majority of people who understands that it must be hideous to have gender, to have gender dysphoria. But do, OK, but do you not accept, do you not you accept actually... Rebecca, do you not accept that there is something pervasive happening in culture and the gender recognition bill is part of that? But I actually take it to pop culture, where your favourite... Taylor Swift, very soon, she'll never be able to win an award for yes, women. Yes, and I hate She'll never be able to win a Best Actress yeah, Award, no, I do. a Best Female yeah, Singer Award. And what's that doing? Actually, it's um, stripping away the rights that women like Amanda, as we discussed last week, fought but, um, decades for. The problem for. is that it doesn't make good telly because it's a complicated, nuanced thing, and I believe both things to be true, that gender is for your hideous I'm just, and women's but, rights. But I'm, hard, I'm, I'm, I'm sick to death of a tiny minority of people, an absolutely minuscule minority of people being supported by a woke agenda lobby trying to cancel people but most of them like don't me want who it. say, yeah, actually, I'm a woman and I will not accept anyone, how, whatever fab clothes they have, however much... Um, um, uh, surgery. What about if I've gone through surgery? So I, I don't care. Doesn't make you a difference. Can't, you can't. Oh, if you're committed you, enough to fully go through you the surgery, you cannot surely. become a woman. It's not if about you're, commitment. You're you're you cannot become a woman. I'm Calvin, sorry. Calvin, final word. Even though you're the bloke on the panel, it's not about commitment. It's about reality. A man cannot become a woman. A woman cannot become a man. We should be able to support these minorities without pandering to their delusions. That is the, the start. Just let them wear frocks and stilettos. You know, um, well, got, why should got... the government and why should we be paying for all these incredibly expensive, hugely damaging um, you know, to their own bodies? You know, one of my friends who's a surgeon, he said, we all look back in, in 50 years' time and say, how did we allow human beings, mm. surgeons, in our general mm. medical systems to mutilate human beings' bodies to try and make them into something else? Amanda Patel. Calvin Robinson, Rebecca Reid, thank you so much. Powerful debate. But coming up, after making numerous destructive yet unproven allegations against the royal family, why are Harry and Meghan continuing to avoid tough questions by only accepting interviews with close media allies? My superstar panel returned to debate that because I've picked a BFF from ITV, apparently, to do the next one. But first, after a tumultuous year that put the party's very existence under threat, how can the Conservatives come back stronger in 2023 and keep Britain away from the socialist stranglehold of Labour? True Blue grandee Jacob Rees-Mogg speaks out live in the studio. He's up straight after the break. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deeds & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Mark Stein. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News.
Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there from 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. We are GB News, the people's channel. Why not take us home with you by visiting the GB News shop at gbnews.store. You'll find all the official merchandise, a really good present actually for yourself, your friends or your family. We ship across the UK mainland at no extra cost. GB News, the people's channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. Monday to Thursday on GB News, it's Bev Turner today from 10 a.m. We're going to be here for you, our GB News family, to keep you up to date, but also make you smile. The guy went from puberty to adultery. <laughs> and I can't wait to bring a few of my own opinions. I have no time for cultural totalitarianism. <laughs> we'll engage in passionate but always polite debate with your thoughts and opinions at the centre of it all. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hi there, it's Stephen and Anne. At breakfast from 6am, you'll always be caught up with everything you need to know. The latest headlines, opinions and debates. We'll bring you the good news and the bad, but most of all, we're here for you. Remember, send in your views and let us know what you would like us to talk about. That's because we're your news channel. And every morning at 6am, it's breakfast on GB News. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. for Gloria Meets. In exclusive interviews, I'll be finding out who our politicians really are and what they really think. It's something that you would never want anyone to suffer. I didn't know what channels there were. B, I didn't think I'd be believed. I must have weighed about seven stone and I'm five foot eight. My instincts was to sort of cover this up. I mean, clearly that was a mistake. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm, where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11pm. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us, 11pm, seven nights a week. Time now for Conservative Party grandee Jacob Rees-Mogg, a distinguished MP for more than a decade. Jacob was business secretary, of course, under the ousted Liz Truss until October, and a senior cabinet minister under Boris Johnson before that. He's now on the back benches, but remains one of the most popular Tories among both colleagues in Parliament and the Conservative grassroots, who, let's be honest, feel betrayed after the anti-democratic coup to impose Rishi Sunak as PM. So after a tumultuous year for the Tories in government, I'm delighted to say he joins me now. And Jacob, well, I mean, it's hard to believe when you look at where Boris Johnson was this time last year, fighting back against the health establishment, saying, no, we will not lock down despite all of that pressure. Because you will remember, you were in the meetings last year, Sage wanted to lock us down again. He's not in power. It, it, it can, it, can you get your head around sometimes the fact that the Tories seem to commit this gross act of self-harm? It's absolutely fascinating looking at it as a political commentator rather than as an active participant. That's not just the Tory party, but if you look at the three most charismatic leaders post-war, Margaret Thatcher, Tony Blair and Boris Johnson, and they're all decapitated by their own parties and it's very hard to understand why, because all three of them were exceptionally good at winning elections. They had, and in two cases still have, a very vibrant charisma that gets their message across in a way that others can't. I mean, both Tony Blair and Boris Johnson appealed to the other side's voters in a way that normal leaders don't. 
and yet the parties decided to get rid of them. And I think it was a very eccentric decision to get rid of Blair and an even more eccentric one to get rid of Boris Johnson. And can we just talk for a moment about the Conservative Party members? Because we have a lot of them who watch this show. And they feel very betrayed about what happened a couple of months ago. Uh, they were given no vote. There is now a real move amongst the establishment of your party to actually remove their democratic right forever. There's new this Peter Crudus, as Lord Peter Crudus has set up this new organisation, the Conservative Democratic Organisation, backed by Priti Patel. Uh, do you back this organisation? What do you think is going on in your well, party? I strongly back the right of Conservative members to vote for the leader of their party. And party members should tell their association chairman not to vote to change the rules, because the rules cannot be changed unless the chairman of individual associations agree to it. And they should refuse, because it's not the party members who got it wrong, it's members of parliament who got it wrong. It's members of parliament who defenestrated Boris Johnson. Uh, it was members of parliament on their own who got us to Theresa May, which wasn't our most successful experiment in leadership. So I would strongly defend their right. I, I'm worried that the increase in the membership fee that is proposed, mm. taking it from £25 to £39, will see a decline in members. And then people may say, well, we haven't got so many members now, so they shouldn't have the vote. I think that would be a very bad argument. And if democracy is a good thing, which as Conservatives we think it is, it should apply within the Conservative Party as much as in the country at large. How did we end up with Jeremy Hunt as Chancellor? Because it feels like there's been some sort of anti-democratic globalist coup to me. Oh, I wouldn't be too conspiratorial about it. Um, Jeremy Hunt is a very intelligent, capable man. But he wasn't wanted by the party. He wasn't wanted to be leader by the party, but that doesn't mean that people don't respect his abilities. He's a thoughtful, considered individual. I'm not pretending I agree with him on everything or um, that I would have chosen to make the decision because to remember, made. he wanted a second referendum. He also was an advocate for a zero COVID Chinese uh, policy. Uh, absolutely. Um, I'm not saying that he gets everything right, but none of us get everything right. Um, big things to get wrong. Though, but he's accepted the referendum result. He's made it clear as Chancellor uh, he won't do anything to sure? undermine Brexit. Well, Given that briefing to the Sunday the, Times the, the other week? The Swiss kite was flown and was shot down pretty swiftly uh, and resiled from pretty swiftly. Uh, and he's um, uh, embraced the economic opportunities of being out of the European Union. He said that quite recently. So uh, he is a big figure within the Tory party. Um, and I wish him well. We need to have a successful and strong Chancellor of the Exchequer. We need a good and calm government and I hope that he can be a part of that. It just felt to me like Liz Truss never was given a chance. The establishment, the media in this country and sadly a lot of people, a lot of Tory MPs were not prepared to respect the democratic vote by Tory well, members. Uh, what's the line about the fault lies not in the stars but in ourselves? That, that I, I don't think it's any good when something has not worked. Mm -hmm to blame conspirators or to blame third parties for a number of reasons it didn't work. Some were luck, some were judgment. That is always the way. Um, do I think that much of what Liz was trying to achieve is a good thing to achieve, that we need economic growth? Yes, absolutely. Uh, but it didn't work. I think the greater mistake was getting rid of Boris Johnson and the efforts to uh, remove him, which had no democratic mandate. And I think the mandate is important. Boris Johnson was endorsed both by members of the Conservative Party and by the British electorate. But it's very difficult for a government without that mandate to take bold decisions. And that is an issue that Liz faced uh, and, of course, Rishi Sunak now faces. Is Boris's political career still alive? Oh, yes. He remains one of the biggest figures in British politics. Uh, I mean, you should try and organise this. You should try and walk down high streets in England with a variety of British politicians and you will find the only one that everybody wants to come up and speak yeah. to is B. Johnson Esquire. Yeah. No, indeed. I, I've seen that. It's and phenomenal, isn't it? It is. He, he, uh, he, he is a political phenomenon and maybe, Jacob, you are going to need him to stop this coalition from hell, a socialist coalition from hell, which we're envisaging of Starmer, the Lib Dems, Sturgeon and the Greens. Because 
actually that is going to be disastrous for Britain. If it is a straight choice, because the thing is, right, Sunak might be a great guy. He has not moved the polls at all. They've moved a bit, actually, and he outranks um, Sakir on uh, the um, economic competence, which is an important test for Conservatives. But you're quite right, Boris has an added zest and charisma mm. over other political figures. And you're also quite right that a coalition of people who haven't been voted for, the great virtue of First Past the Post, is that the party with the biggest number of votes gets to mm. choose. Now, if that's Labour, fair enough. That, that if it's the Liberals, be unlikely, but fair enough. The party with the most votes ruling. But if you have a grubby coalition and you get Nicola Sturgeon pulling the strings mm. um, after her lack of success in Scotland, or you get the Lib Dems insisting on electoral reform mm. to try and keep them in perpetual power, that would be very bad constitutionally yeah, yeah, yeah. and very bad for the, for the country. No, indeed. Now, look, I want to talk about a couple of political hot topics on the agenda. And actually, I've been really heartened by Sunak over the past couple of days. I said at the top of the show, it feels like maybe he's trying to channel his inner Iron Lady and actually stare down the unions, which is really necessary, isn't it? Because if he backs down here, they know they've got him. He's got to hold firm. Governments have to govern. Uh, the Ted Heath question of who governs was answered resoundingly by the electorate. So if you don't know, clearly not you. Uh, and it is important uh, to ensure that you don't give in to every gust of wind. And it's interesting that the railway workers, some of whom turn out to be extremely well paid. We start reading about signalmen who get mm. over £100,000 mm. a year, train drivers £59,000 a year. Um, they are on strike in a way that seems to me and to most voters to be completely unjustifiable, led by a really hard left, rather aggressive figure who seems to have been dug up from the 1970s Labour Party conferences. Uh, we're waiting for him to start talking about composites and comrades. Um, uh, and, and that has lost public sympathy, and I think that's changed the mood uh, around strikes. And the ambulance drivers... Uh, going on strike. I, I think people in absolutely crucial public services have a responsibility as the police and uh, the armed forces who obviously have to stand in when other people go on strike. Um, they should not be doing but it. But it's morally wrong, isn't it? It's morally wrong that tomorrow, here in the UK in 2022, a heart attack victim, a stroke victim in certain areas of the country could be left lying on a floor for eight hours. That is morally reprehensible that the unions are allowing this. Well, look, I think most ambulance drivers are good people and they will find it very difficult to follow their union bosses in, in, in no, that so. way. Um, I also think it's very odd that we've been told that we mustn't do things because we mustn't take any risks, that the NHS is there for the country, not the country mm. there for the NHS. All of us being told, it's like COVID, we've got to adjust our behaviour for the convenience of the NHS cannot be right. Uh, the NHS must uh, fulfil its obligations. Uh, Rishi avoided the question today at the Liaison Committee, but Dominic Raab said it was on the table. Does the UK need to leave the ECHR to actually have any hope of stopping the boats? Um, my view of this is that there isn't a majority in Parliament for outright leaving the ECHR, but there probably is a majority for doing what was done over uh, the prisoner voting rights. And ignore them. And, and ignore them and face the ECHR and the Council of Europe with the reality that this is an intrusion into British domestic policy too far uh, and that we are simply going to do something slightly different, that we will observe people's human rights under our understanding of them. And the greatest protection of our human rights is not a court outside the confines of this country, but is our own democracy. British people will not vote for a government that doesn't have proper standards of behaviour and proper uh, concern for human rights. But the Rwanda scheme is a perfectly fair, sensible, well-legislated for scheme, and we should go ahead with it. I, you know, it's been reported, I mean, I don't know this as fact, but it's been reported that the injunction, which isn't really an injunction and other countries ignore from the European court, was given by a Russian judge who was apparently in a bar when he gave it. And that's overriding... It's that's it that's a right overriding an act of parliament yeah. um, and the British courts. It's completely that's ridiculous. Uh, speaking of outrage, uh, the New York Times... Uh, 
say, are calling for the dismantling of our monarchy in a really egregious opinion piece overnight. Have, have Harry and Meghan done real damage to our international reputation with this Netflix documentary? I don't think any of my constituents read the New York Times. I, I don't care what the New York Times has to say. It's not an influential paper in the United Kingdom. It's not very influential in the United States anymore because it's become mm. uh, a hard left organization that, uh, according to Donald Trump, peddles fake news. Uh, so why should anyone fuss about the New York Times? As regards Duke, Duke, and, Duke and Duchess of Sussex, I wish them well. But what I'm concerned about, what I hold very dear because it's so much about the nation, what I think of as the nation, the symbolism of the nation, uh, is the monarchy. Mm. And that is not affected by subsidiary members going on various television outlets or whatever else they do. I don't think that really matters. It's not a concerning issue. No, indeed. And look, I just wanted to end uh, by playing a great moment uh, from Channel 4 News uh, a few weeks ago. Well, this, well done. This, this, is, this, is, this is when you are... Uh, Let's say called out uh, <laughs> their presenter for, for some obvious bias uh, li live on air. Let, let's have a look at this. EU that make us have, have you seen the, today's We must poll? really be getting on with that. I mean, it, it, it suggests that people have changed their minds. Well, we, we, ha we had a referendum, and this is a bit like the Scottish question. Those of you who lost, and I include you in that category after your comments to Steve Baker, uh, those of you who lost are very determined to have another referendum. You're, you're just like Nicola Sturgeon, quite honestly. Well, uh, we'll leave that for another conversation. My, my comments had nothing to do with politics or policy, I assure you. Do, um, have you apologised we'll for them online? Do, 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 have, do you I want to apologise on, on the air for them? Because I, I think apologized. that's important. Good. I have apologised, Mr rees uh, and he's accepted... Oh, good, that good, that's on. important. Now now, he apologised because he was caught, obviously, and without wanting to necessarily pick specifically on Christian Guru Murthy, because, but it was a terrible thing. He, he called your former colleague, Steve Baker, the C word, uh, live on air. There's a problem with much of our media, isn't there? Well, it is as it is. Um, I actually think highly of Christian. I think he's a capable journalist. He's an interesting thinker, but he is as political uh, as GB News is. And, and I think why I like GB News so much, it's clear that you're political, uh, whereas some other outlets pretend that they're impartial. I, of all the people I was interviewed by um, uh, when he was um, still interviewing, I thought Jon Snow was one of the best and fairest interviewers and in that he would give a socialist as tough a ride as a conservative. But John did not have conservative views. And I thought... I thought he managed to get it right by not hiding his views, but by being very fair when you were being interviewed. Not everybody is as good at doing it as Jon Snow was. No. <laughs> Definitely not. Jacob rees -Mogg. great to have well, you. Pleasure. Have a very, very Christmas. Thank Merry you Merry Christmas so to you much. too. Thank you. But coming up, is it wrong to speak out against striking ambulance workers putting lives at risk? Fleet Street icon Calvin McKenzie has come under fire online for his condemnation of emergency workers. He's going to defend his position live at 10.45. But first, with Prince Harry agreeing to yet another bombshell interview with his ITV ally Tom Bradbury, why are the Sussexes so terrified of facing tough questions? My superstar panel return to debate that in the media buzz next. Plus, we're going to have a first look at Channel 4's controversial Christmas offering, Prince Andrew, the music. Musical. Back soon. We are GB News, and we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for bringing us your conversations, for helping our great nation find its voice. We are here for you on radio, television, and online. Across England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. It's not the BBC, you know, you actually get your facts right. We are proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hi there, it's Stephen and Anne. At breakfast from 6am, you'll always be caught up with everything you need to know. The latest headlines, opinions and debates. We'll bring you the good news and the bad, but most of all, we're here for you. Remember, send in your views and let us know what you would like us to talk about. That's because we're your news channel. 
And every morning at 6am, it's breakfast on GB News. Monday to Thursday on GB News, it's Bev Turner today from 10am. We're going to be here for you, our GB News family, to keep you up to date, but also make you smile. The guy went from puberty to adultery. <laughs> and I can't wait to bring a few of my own opinions. I have no time for cultural totalitarianism. <laughs> we'll engage in passionate, but always polite debate with your thoughts and opinions at the centre of it all. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Nana Akue, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's on it, she's on it. I, 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 I... Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank, and of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4 pm on GB News, the People's Channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Tomorrow's news tonight now in our media buzz. Straight to the Daily Mail, which asks of emergency workers, how will they live with themselves if people die today? The Daily Telegraph leads with House Secretary Steve Barclay's claim that unions have made a conscious choice to inflict harm on patients. And in another catastrophe, the Daily Express leads with the failure of the Royal Mail to deliver Christmas Post on time, calling it the Royal Fail. Just one of 120 first-class letters posted by People England arrived at its destination the next working day. Terrible stuff. Back with me now, top Daily Mail columnist Amanda Patel, the Reverend Calvin Robinson and the author and journalist Rebecca Reed. Now, throughout the Harry and Meghan circus act on Netflix, the couple tied themselves in so many knots until their so-called truth was exposed as a fallacy. Take this moment, where Meghan recalls her emotional encounter with ITV's Tom Bradby, claiming she was oblivious, completely oblivious, that this recorded interview with a national broadcaster would ever be released to the public. Hello. How are you? You OK? Yes. OK. Tom, the journalist who was on that trip with us. Yes, the Africa documentary. This was a royal documentary that the palace was greenlighting. I guess I just assumed this was just going to be a, like a glossy version of a happy tour. I didn't know what he was going to ask me. You can see, like, I hadn't, I hadn't touched up my makeup. I hadn't, I was just fried. Would it be fair to say not really? Okay. It's really been a struggle. Yes. I mean, and I guess I just never thought they'd even use it in the documentary. I had no idea that was going to be, like, the thing that travelled around the world. No, no idea. She had no idea. Well, in that case, uh, Harry and Meghan must be furious that Bradby so maliciously abused their trust, <laughs> right? Nope. In actual fact, relations couldn't be better because he's been handpicked by Haz for an interview about his hatchet job memoir, Spare, due for release on January the 10th. And to top it all off, in April last year, I exclusively revealed that Bradby was in a bitter feud with the Prince of Wales after he sided with Harry over William in the War of the Windsors. So first the cosy catch-up with BFF Oprah Winfrey, now a sit-down interview with their number one British ally and BFF from ITV. I mean, Amanda Patel, this is not a couple that want to submit themselves to any journalistic scrutiny, is it? That's certainly true, Dan. Can I just say one thing? Yes. When you introduced me, you say Amanda Platel, the Reverend. 
And, and, people, <laughs> and people think that what I'm saying is really terrible because... In, in that outfit, I don't <laughs> think so. I'd go can, to that church. Can I just say you just did a little pause? There. OK. <laughs> Back on to, okay, fine. Back yeah. on to Meghan and Harry. Um, um, I'll be better. Look, uh, if she had, if they had any guts, they'd get Emily Maitlis to interview them, the woman who took down Prince Andrew. You, know, you just get one of your mates, you know. I mean, I wish I knew um, Calvin well enough, because if I had some huge scandal, I'd say, you know, Calvin, why don't you come yeah. and interview Give me? Give me an easy ride, it's, it's Calvin. Totally, it's no, totally you wouldn't. She's not There's putting... No way. It's... She is not putting herself up to... Both of them are not putting themselves up to any scrutiny. But, Rebecca... But why would this, you? Because, why because would Rebecca, you? Because, Rebecca, they, they say that these revelations are so serious, right, yeah. that they have an impact on the British monarchy. That's what they hint at, mm -hmm. at least. So if they're so serious... We can't take you seriously if the people asking the questions are your BFF Oprah and your BFF Tom Bradby. Dan, if we I, cannot take you seriously. If I had a big interview to give, I would get my friend Angelica Malin to do it. She comes on here sometimes. Mm. Not us. Best, she'd be my Not best us, friend since okay? I was 22. Mm. Not that is us. the person I get because I know she'd ask me the questions. Yeah, and we wouldn't so take it seriously. Of course you wouldn't. But why we on wouldn't earth? take it seriously. Why on earth? They, they, are, they have got a bit of a problem with keeping an exact track record of what they said before. I, I totally agree with that. Why on earth would they want somebody to come be mean to them? Why would anybody open Not be mean to, that? to them, just. I ask them but the they questions saw Prince like, Andrew. OK, you said that, was... that that was black and that was white. Oh, jeez, I shouldn't have said yeah. that. That's, that's... Um, I'm sorry, you said that that's that was... That's another one in the blasphemy jar for was... Amanda. That was purple and Oh, yeah, you're, you're apparently not allowed to say whiter than white. Uh, no, no, right. uh, yeah, I didn't uh, mean that. Uh, Nelly, I just mean... Calvin Robinson, yeah. um, the issue is, as well, is how much does this impact Bradby's job as an impartial journalist too when reporting on this couple when he's so desperate oh, to get this scoop yeah he'll get the offers from them continuously every time they want something they'll go back to him yeah but that he's, means he's, he's he can never critically cover them no true but also but for me i thought you were going to show the clip of you know she made this big deal about how she couldn't curtsy and she went down and she i think it was disrespectful to the mm. queen and then we've seen this clip released this week that she was curtsying on suits i saw she that on nigel well farage hot. earlier that was it. yeah <laughs> so I, another lie that she's been caught out in is constant i think their it's issue tiring. i think their issue at the moment is you say well the last him tom bradby again and again yeah. but you can only tell the same story a number of times and they have now told all of the stories so the options are either they're going to have no, to stop saying spare. bigger things. Yeah, no, but remember, in spare. I, I think no, but a lot is being missed about what spare is actually about. So Netflix. It's only about nothing. No, 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 no. That's wrong. Netflix was about the exit from the royal family. Why spare is going to be so damaging is this is all about his upbringing in the royal family. It's expected to be highly critical of the but king's after parenting that. skills. Okay. But potentially that, critical of we can Camilla. All, we can all say mean things about our parents, but then you've done it. It's I don't. They need to, no, no. Of course, I don't either. I love no. mine. Thanks for I think you've got kid. to be a scumbag. Um, but no, no, but realistically, <laughs> what I'm saying is they have not done anything other than talk about the past yeah. so far. What they need is good advisors who will say no. to them... And I agree with that. I agree with that. Final word, say, Amanda. All, all I would say is um, most people... First of all, she'd interview with Oprah Winfrey. Most people would say, Tom Hoy. Yeah, yeah. Don't indeed. mean to be unkind. Indeed. Now, well, tis the season uh, for controversial royal tally and battling for attention against Harry and Meghan's Netflix wine fest is Channel 4's Prince Andrew the Musical, a stagey spin on the Duke of York's romance with Fergie and his infamous news night head-to-head -head with Emily Maitlis. Now the broadcaster has been keeping this divisive project under wraps, perhaps worried about a backlash for scheduling it days after King Charles delivers his first Christmas speech, but we've been granted a sneak peek at one of the musical numbers. Royal Highness, how do you think that went? Well, I nailed it. I did everything right. Care for a profit a roll? A what? I nailed it! Ah, goodness me. Goodness me, it's all gone mad. Rebecca Reed, Calvin Robinson, Amanda Platow, do stand by because coming up, one of my panellists reveals why the DVLA has given them road rage as I crown today's greatest Britain and Union jackass. But first, Calvin McKenzie's scathing takedown of striking ambulance workers drew calls for cancellation from the woke mob. But he's free to speak his mind on my show, and that's what he's going to do straight after the break. We're back in just two minutes' time.
every morning from six o'clock, we'll wake you up with GB News Breakfast with all the stories you didn't know from the night before. So whether it's serious news, entertainment, or your own views from all over our great nation, we're here to kick off your day with a smile. And the national media should be reflecting and reporting what's happening here. You will notice the Northwestern accents. <laughs> Whether you're with us on TV, radio, or online, every morning, it's breakfast from 6 a.m. Hope you can join us. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me in the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the People's Channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the People's News Channel. My name's Tom Harvard and join me 9.30am every weekday for The Briefing, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about what's going on in politics today. I wonder if this is a deal that might need to be like the biscuits in this factory, twice baked. Is there not an opportunity here to win out against the extremes? Tom Harvard, GB News. What are you going to do about it? Things should have been done differently and they, and they certainly are being done differently. Don't miss it. The Briefing with me, Tom Harwood, 9.30, Monday to Friday on GB News. Join me, Nana Akwe, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's on it, she's on it. Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank, and of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4 pm on GB News, the People's Channel. It's time now for Uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. Protesting nurses have only just returned to their posts and yet in under two hours' time, the first paramedics and emergency workers will walk out across England and Wales in the biggest ambulance strike for 30 years. With only immediately life-threatening calls due to be answered, disruption is expected to last up to three days, leaving thousands of vulnerable patients at serious risk. Our elderly relatives will have nobody to pick them up from a fall, heart attack victims will have to make their own way to hospital, and it's been warned those with dementia risk being left to, quote, wander the streets. NHS bosses have said there is a huge risk of harm, and they're not the only ones expressing concerns. Our very own Fleet Street veteran Calvin McKenzie has today come under fire from union sympathisers online for daring to speak out against these callous striking workers. So, Calvin McKenzie, you've let loose on this today and folk are saying you should be cancelled for what you've had to say about ambulance workers. Uh, so, oh, go on. Go on. There's been the, mo there's been the most massive pile-on by revolting um, admirers of ambulance drivers. Let, let's be honest about it. You, you spelled it out. And I see finally, I've, we've now even got Barclay, the uh, Secretary of State for Health, now saying the same thing, that what's happening is that these people are using your, your family, your children, your mum and dad, their problems in order to get themselves a pay rise. And the, the way that they're trying to turn it around and say, oh, it's down to the government is absolute poppycock. When you go into a job like that, it's the same with the police force, the same with the army. The idea that you're going to now use some old deer lying on a bathroom floor to turn around to say to the government, you give us another four quid a week or we're going to kill that woman. It's an absolute disgrace. I describe them uh, the ambulance drivers, and I believe this, and this is what sparked off all the lefties. I also climbed into unison, GMB, Unite. I don't give a stuff, right? I describe them as vile shitbags, and that is the truth. They can hand out the stuff, they can hand it out, but when somebody gives it back to them, and what I can't understand and Calvin, is what about why when they come back a to prime you? minister? What about when they come? We'll, we'll come to that in one second. But what about when they come back to you, Calvin, and say, OK, we get paid £27,055 and we can't live yeah. on that? 
Because that's what well, they'll say the, to the, you. The answer is, I don't know what their average earnings are. And what they never take into account is, of course, that they get the kind of pension which you or any of your colleagues or anybody watching your show can only dream about, which is worth about another 20%. And by the way, they're one of the reasons why they're all quitting teachers uh, and the like and, and uh, NHS and all state workers all start quitting around about 51 because they've done 30 years of service and they join the great resignation, which is causing such a problem in our country. Look, I'm not saying that they make a king's ransom or a queen's ransom. They don't. And I don't I do accept that the only way you can really guarantee a pay rise is prepared to walk from the job which you're currently doing. And I reckon that's a problem for us. And if that turned out to be a massive problem, if half the workforce went, we would have to pay them more money. But the idea of don't let's ever lose sight of the idea that tomorrow and already, it, I don't know whether, you, whether you've been following this, in Bangor, a lady in a nursing home fell on the floor, broke her hip. She was there for 20 Five hours. It's 25 it's, hours. It's Do you know what they said? The Welsh Ambulance Service said? The Welsh Ambulance Service said, oh, this was due to the fact that a number of ambulance drivers went sick and there was a lot of demand. Is 20... Yeah. Honestly, Dan, I know. is 25 and, and think hours about what acceptable? Gonna, no, of course it's not. Of course it's not. And I don't believe they should be allowed to strike, Calvin, personally. I don't think the nurses should be allowed to strike. I don't think the ambulance workers should be allowed to strike. I think they should be in the same category as the police and our armed forces. But, look, you wanted to talk about the political side of this. I've actually been quite complimentary of Rishi Sunak today because I think he's channelling his inner uh, Margaret Thatcher here. But, but you disagree. Oh, yes. I think we should, they should have got on the front foot earlier. Barclay is now saying this. By the way, when the Daily Telegraph comes out or, or, or you, you pick it up online or whatever, right, that will be within a few hours of the strike actually starting. They should have started all this campaign a week, 10 days ago. There will be lots of people on their side. And imagine how the story will fly around the world. Immediately, people start dying. What kind of, what kind of sign is that for our country? We, have, we, we can't get out of the country die. because of border force. Yeah, and people will we, die you know, we, tomorrow. We, we people can't get out because of, we can't get out of our local village because of trains. And now, actually, we can't even get a hospital because somebody's decided they want to pay rise. I admire what Sunak is doing. I think they should get their, up their PR and get Barclay out more often. Calvin McKenzie. Well, certainly uncancelled to date. Thank you, Calvin. Have a very Merry Christmas and we will speak in the new year. But it is time now to reveal today's greatest Britain in Union Jackass. My superstar panel return, Amanda Patel, your GB nominee, please. It is Home Secretary Suella Braverman. Um, because she's finally got through the Rwanda scheme, which will see illegal immigrants um, packed off these shores. I think we should rename her Suella Braveheart. Like it. Oh, no, actually, he died, didn't he? Mel Gibson died. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we, we won't do that. OK. Calvin Robinson, your nominee. Mine is an honorary nominee for Tucker Carlson because he has exposed the conspiracy that the CIA, it seems, did have something to do with JFK's oh. assassination. And a week before he was assassinated, he said... There is a plot in the country to enslave every man, woman and child. Before I leave this high and noble office, I intend to expose this plot. Oh and the goodness. CIA killed him. Yeah, we need to look much more into this. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated with the JFK assassination and Tucker's doing great work on it. Rebecca Reed, we your nominee. We could get the true crime girlies on that one. They could get that solved. Um, Beth Mead, the footballer, Lioness, for being nominated for Sports Personality of the Year. OK, great. Uh, well, great nominees, but I'm actually going to go with Amanda Patel. She's already got a nickname here, Amanda. <laughs> it's Superwoman Suella, and don't you forget it. But no, okay, she is so... today's greatest Britain because she always gets a pile of you-know-what chucked over her and she has stood firm when it comes great to woman. the Rwanda scheme. Uh, Union Jackass time now. Amanda Patel, who are you nominating? Oh, it's got to... Is this is our last show before Christmas or mine. Um, it's got to be Meghan and Harry, hasn't it? Who have now got this new documentary coming out where they're going to walk in Nelson Mandela's shoes and inspire the world. Well, I've gone out to Joe Berg and I've walked in his shoes. They just bought from the local shop. They cost about five to do the trip. Hmm. Very fitting end for that. You just wanted an easy win, didn't you? <laughs> I did not. Calvin, Calvin <laughs> Robinson. That was carefully considered. Calvin <laughs> Robinson, you are not. Mine's the University of Brighton for cancelling Christmas, another one of these woke universities that's told their lecturers to avoid using the word Christmas when wishing people a happy Christmas. A happy winter closure, everybody. 
and Rebecca Reed, your union jacket. And I'd like to wish Calvin a very happy winter festival. Oh, <laughs> oh don't mind that. I know, you know, I'm generally quite pro-union strikes. Are you pro trying to strikes. traumatise them? <laughs> I'm generally quite pro-union strikes, but one, one group of people who I have no time for is the DVLA, um, who have got the biggest backlog of anything due to the pandemic and have gone on a six-day strike, despite the fact that they barely worked through the pandemic. Really? I mean, young people all over the country are being hampered in their development and freedoms. Well, you know what, just uh, to prove that I'm not completely predictable... <laughs> no! <laughs> Thank you, Calvin. Don't stop uh, now. I'm actually going to go with Rebecca Yay! Reed and the DVLA because how brilliant that even the lefties, even the lefties, even the Mick Lynch lovers <laughs> are starting to turn on these strikes because they are having such real-world consequences. But, Dan, Harry and Meghan... Yeah, you know, they'll be back. <laughs> it's a Christmas <laughs> miracle, back. a Winterval exactly. miracle. Uh, look, what a great year it's been with you three. I've absolutely loved it. Have a wonderful Christmas. Calvin, I know you've got big Christmas shows coming up, don't yes, you? Yes, there is a GB News Christmas special on Christmas Eve at 2pm and Christmas Day at 11am. Absolutely. And let me just do a little plug to say tomorrow night on the show we are going to be revealing the greatest Britons and Union jackasses of the year. So you've oh, got to be back with us tomorrow. It's my last show of the year. Amanda Patel, Calvin Robinson, Rebecca Reed. I'll see you tomorrow night at 9pm. Headliners is next, though. Good night. We are GB News, and we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for bringing us your conversations, for helping our great nation find its voice. We are here for you on radio, television, and online, across England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. It's not the BBC, you know, you actually get your facts right. We are proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. My name's Tom Harwood and join me 9.30am every weekday for The Briefing, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about what's going on in politics today. I wonder if this is a deal that might need to be like the biscuits in this factory, twice baked. Is there not an opportunity here to win out against the extremes? Tom Harwood, GB News. What are you going to do about it? Things should have been done differently and they, and they certainly are being done differently. Don't miss it. The Briefing with me, Tom Harwood, 9.30, Monday to Friday on GB News. Every morning from 6 o'clock, we'll wake you up with GB News Breakfast with all the stories you didn't know from the night before. So whether it's serious news, entertainment or your own views from all over our great nation, we're here to kick off your day with a smile. And the national media should be reflecting and reporting what's happening here. You will notice the northwestern accents. <laughs> <laughs> whether you're with us on TV, radio or online, every morning it's breakfast from 6am. Hope you can join us. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me in the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the people's channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the people's news channel. Join me, Nana Akue, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's on it today! Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank, and of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4 pm on GB News, the People's Channel. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. 
Freeview Channel 236. And you view Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good evening, you're with GB News. In a moment, headliners. First, let's bring you up to date with the latest news headlines. And the top story, ambulance workers and paramedics are preparing to go on strike tomorrow after last-minute talks this afternoon between the government and unions failed to address the issue of pay. The health secretary met union representatives, but pay discussions were off the table. Instead, the government sought reassurances over strike cover and patient safety. At least five ambulance trusts have declared critical incidents as they face unprecedented pressure.